Hey everybody, welcome to project eight. This is going to be a master replication. You are gonna choose from an entire file full of renderings. Uh, these are all different costume renderings. And you are going to pick them. And you are gonna pick one that you like. This is a sampling of different renderings that are available. And you are going to pick one of these renderings and you are going to replicate it to the best of your ability. Now, depending on the rendering that you choose, we will discuss what you need to replicate and what you don't need to replicate in order to create this picture. So to start ourselves off, I'm going to pick one of these pictures and start a project. Uh, this video will help you with the setup of your project, but essentially you are going to try and replicate this costume the best way you can. And since all of you have different renderings, your result will be different. Okay, So you're going to start with create a new image. You're going to start with a regular piece of paper, so 8.5 by 11, 300 pixels. Uh, doo -doo -doo, resize. I'm going to pull that back up so that you can see it. Again, 8.5 by 11, 300 pixels resolution. You want it to be nice and big for this one. And click OK. Now I am going to pick a rendering that I want to do. I'm really tempted to do Wonder Woman, but I won't. One moment. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and do this picture right here. It's kind of low resolution and that's fine because I'm going to be drawing over it. So if you were to pick a picture out like this, you would pick your picture and download it and ask me, uh, first of all, whether or not somebody else is doing it. So you can't do this picture because I'm doing it. And also, we would talk about what parts you need to replicate. You don't need to do this drawing down here or this symbol uh, or necessarily this sketch but you get to choose which sketch you want to do and you get to choose how much of it you want to do. And by you get to choose, you get to propose it to me and I may or may not allow you to do just that much. So you want to go ahead and actually open that image in Painter. Okay, and we're going to do what we did before which is have one, our two pieces right next to each other. And then I want you to do a select all over here, grab it and drag it into the other picture. And then you can close your original image. It is nice to still have a photo viewer or some sort of view of your JPEG open and I'm going to leave that open on the other computer and actually I take that back let's not close that image in uh, oh wait no never mind uh, oh. uh, no. Oops. Um, you don't need this open, but I'm gonna leave it open just in case. Uh, I'm gonna transform this, and I can use a keyboard port shortcut, or I can grab over here, and I'm gonna make it nice and big. Now, I am just gonna do the color portion. I'm just gonna do that person over there, and I want them to be a reasonable size on my piece of paper. I'm also gonna call, it, call this original. Original. I'm going to lock it by clicking over here. So now that it's locked, I can't mess with it. And that's really important because you do not want to paint on your original layer and you don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to theoretically, um, I'm going to unlock it. And you do not have to do this. And I actually recommend that you don't do this. But for clarity, I'm going to do this. Actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'm going to put a layer mask on it. And this is a great opportunity to teach you guys about layer masks. Now, layer mask is gonna add this little secondary square next to my original picture. And what this mask does is it says, on this layer, ignoring transparency, I wanna see through only the parts that I want to see through. And I know that's complicated. But let's grab uh, a paint bucket and let's fill our background layer with black. So you can clearly see where the picture is and where the picture is not. I'm going to do the same thing to this layer mask, which is I'm going to click over here so this is selected, and I'm going to fill that with black. 
and that is a pretty strange result. Um, and I don't mean that as in, hey, that was strange. I mean that as in, uh, the layer mask that you're seeing, I suspect this color is not actually black. Yeah, it's not. Um, the color on your layer mask is most effective if it's black or white. So that's what happens if your layer mask is black. You don't see anything from that layer even though it's on. If your layer mask is white, you see everything. So what that means is if you grab a paintbrush and make your paintbrush black, you can make it large and you can paint away, aka erase, and this is not making it black. I know it, it looks like it's making it black, but it's actually just removing it, right? So if you notice on the thumbnail, that is not gone. It's a little easier to see if I do it right over her center. She still has a center, right? It is still there, okay? Right there is still a green little person. And it's just the layer mask that has this on it. Now if I turn back to white, and fill your canvas layer with white, you can see that where I painted is not black, even though there's black on my brush. Where I painted on the layer mask is what's invisible and visible. And here again, I'm painting with black on my brush, and I'm painting on that layer mask, not an actual picture. And that allows you to say, hey, I want you to see through. I want you to see through it where it's black and where it's white I want you to not see through it. So now if I change my brush to white and I paint I'm going to just see her. I'm going to get myself some stuff. So why am I doing this? Well I'm teaching you this because it's a very fun and useful function of this program. I'm doing it so that I can see where my person is being placed without having to look at all of the weird extra stuff so I want to make sure she's kind of center and that it looks good and I'm actually going to grab it with the layer move tool and move it up. Now, as you can see the mask is attached to the layer so if I decide to change anything uh, it, it like move the layer it will move with it because it's attached physically to the layer that it came from. So if we need to use this I will use it some more in some more layers and show you. But now that we've done that layer mask, I'm going to go ahead and lock this original again. Now, this is all you really need to start your project. I want it to be 8.5 by 11. I want your picture in it. That's about it. You're eventually going to turn off your original image. Your original image is just there to help you draw. Uh, one of the nice things to do is not only lock it, but to take it to about half opacity and leave it on the top of all your layers. So make all your layers in the middle. I would suggest to start with an outline. Even if that outline doesn't end up being in your finished thing at all, I would recommend there being an outline. Now this original picture looks like it was done in colored pencil. So I could do it in colored pencil. And if I did that, um, let's try colored pencil. So this is the experimental part. This is the part where you're going to want to experiment with the quality of your colors. Or the quality of your brushes to make it look like what you want it to actually look like. And then you're going to start. Now my outline right now is probably going to end up being in my finished piece. So I want to be a little bit more careful than you might be if you have a picture that isn't going to be replicated with an outline. 
this one right here, you can see it kind of has that dark brown outline. So I choose to do my outline in brown. This one doesn't have an outline on the skirt. So where some of my outline might actually exist in her face or in her hair or around her side, most of this is color and doesn't have a lot of outline detail in it. So I wouldn't use an outline or I wouldn't keep my outline. It would just be something to help me start. Um, this one would have an outline in it and would stay. This one probably wouldn't. This one would be a very different type of outline, right? So you should look at your picture and make a judgment call as to whether or not this is gonna be something that you keep. And especially if it is, you should be careful when you're drawing to make it as accurate as possible. And yes, you're tracing. You don't need to do all of this by hand looking at your picture right next to your right next to you. You should look at it quite a bit. And the reason that is is because it'll help you um, it'll help you to realize where you need to change things. Now you can see mine is a very pix pixelated picture, but her line right here on her jaw and on her neck, the top of her outfit is much darker than in other places. So this line right here, I wanna go ahead and make a little darker. I wanna go ahead and get that overall impression. One of the other reasons it's really good is if you notice you can't see my navigator, that's because my navigator is off on my right hand screen and right next to it is this. So this is gonna be showing me a live update picture of what my picture looks like zoomed out. And if I put this right next to it, I'm getting an idea of whether or not I'm replicating that picture very well. And that's a very uh, good thing to get. So I'm actually having my navigator sit right next to my original picture on my other screen so that I can keep an updated look at it. Now, if you decide this isn't the quality of the brush that you want, you should stop and start over and use the right, the right brush. So I am gonna continue to outline this. And my general plan of action is gonna be to outline and then to start coloring and then to work on detail. And there are lots of little tricks that I will go through and pause and I will make some more videos that show you the general idea of me completing this particular rendering. But I am not, right now I just found a spot where my mask is in the way. So I am going to, also it won't let me paint because I have, won't let me paint on the layer, but it will let me paint on the mask even though it's locked. So I am going to do that. White, white, okay. I'm gonna fix that mask and I am going to oh, somehow I turned mirror painting on. Weirdness, okay. I'm going to fix the mask and I'm going to continue to draw my outline. white there we go I guess colored pencil doesn't really work well on a mask colored pencil I'll switch back to my colored pencil and go back to my outline and I'm going to shrink it back down to the size I need and I'm going to keep going uh, one of the things is not only do you want to be working with, for instance, black? So I've got quite a bit of blue in here, and that blue is likely to be a colored pencil or an outline pencil. There's a lot of illustrations that are done with blue pencil first, and I'm gonna want to represent that. So I'm gonna grab my color wheel and move it over to blue. And the other thing I can do is I'm going to go back to my original 
bump the opacity all the way up, and I'm going to grab that color. This is not cheating. This is perfectly fine. Make sure that when you select your color, you're careful about moving around and finding the exact color that you want to grab. Also, if you want to add this to a color set library, you can. You can make a new color set. Project 8. And it's going to add whatever's on your brush right now. I added, yes, I added it to Project 7. I'm going to come over down here to Project 8 and add that color select that I have. Oops. Lost it. Add that light color swatch and I add this dark dark color swatch here, swatch some green, swatch some yellow, swatch some dark green. We'll start with those and we'll go from there. Um, and swatch a gray as well. So then I'm going to take it back to 50%, grab my blue, go back to my brush with the B key, and now my line is a little less aggressive and is a little blue. Right? My percent is at 80, which means my, my brush is not painting. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. I'm going to undo that a little bit. That's not showing up very blue, and that's because I'm on the wrong layer. There, that's a little bluer. That's better. So this is like I'm drawing with that blue that blue colored pencil. And that's a little heavy, mostly because I bumped this up to 100. I want to take it back down to something not quite 100. So that way I'm not pushing as hard on the brush or on the colored pencil in this case when I'm drawing. I really want a little bit of that texture to happen as if this picture is created with colored pencil. Now it's a little, I have a little bit more freedom with this one because it isn't, um, because it's so blurry. I get to kind of decide how I want to paint this. It's a little heavy. I'm going to bring it down some more. A lot more, actually. But if I decide that I want to color this in colored pencil this way, I get that choice because it's really blurry, so I can't really see what's going on in the original image. And right here, you can see there's blue in her face, but I can't tell if that's colored pencil like the rest of the drawing or if it's watercolor. So I'm going to choose to make it colored pencil for the purposes of this demo because I think it's going to give me a really interesting texture. And if I were painting this, I would totally paint it with colored pencil. Or I guess painting isn't the right word if I were using colored pencil. The other thing is is that I could not put that color on that layer. I have to put it on another layer so that if it gets a little too aggressive, it doesn't ruin the line work that I've already done, right? So if I decide that this is too aggressive and I don't like it and I try and erase it, I'm not going to accidentally erase my line work as well because this is on a different layer. I can also bump it down in opacity without having to redraw it. So I can get this look and this look without changing anything, and I don't have to, if I go back and decide with an er I need an eraser, and this is a little too aggressive and a little too on her skin, I can gently erase it. Gently, yep. Gently erase it, and I don't accidentally erase all this outline, because if they were on the same layer, that would happen. And I don't want to lose all that outline that I spent a lot of time creating. So make sure that you colored pencil. Make sure that you pay attention to what um, layer you're painting on, and pay attention to the effect you're creating. Now, a good rule of thumb is that if you change color or type of stroke, you should change to a new layer. Now, what does that mean if you change color, but you still want to blend with the colors underneath? Such as, I have that blue, and let's say I'm going to also, whoops, I'm going to also put some, uh, some
and this gray in her hair. It, there's some in her in her bodice down here, but maybe I want to also put some in her hair. But I don't want it to be. I turn that back off. Some of you will already guess where I'm going with this. Now, if I just put it on top, it's not really blending. And let's say that I want it to blend. If I click on this button right here, uh, and if I hover over it, it's going to tell you what its duty is. Pick up underlying color. Again, pick up underlying color. So I can do that. And now notice when I go over that blue, I really pick up blue, right? That is partially because this is the settings on this brush are really high, but I'm going to get this really massive blue tint to my color. Part of this is also because the layer style is gel, so it's creating this really interesting look, which I kind of like. It's not appropriate, and we're going to mess with that in a second, but it's giving me some great texture, it's giving me some great personality, and I'm getting a couple different shades on her hair. Now that I've done that, I want to bring it back down to this, right? So how am I going to do that? Well, honestly, I'm just going to bump up the opacity down, right? Just give it that little bit of bump. But that did some stuff to it, right? And I can also take other brushes, like a blur brush, and I can blur that out so that it looks different, so it doesn't look as coarse, make it more Okay, so you can see it better. You can also change this, uh, the layer, the layer type, to really change the way it's presenting. So if I change it to multiply instead of gel, gel gives you um, a very rich color, and multiply is going to basically just stack on what's underneath it. So if you notice, one of the things multiply does is it kind of changes the color of the lines I've already created, so they become a little bluer. So they're kind of charcoal black and then they get a little blue tint to them. And in addition to that, whatever I put on top becomes a little bit more, uh, a little bit more muted. So I can bump that opacity way up. So using more, more tools than just your original brush can be very useful. Change, keeping things on separate layers so you can change the opacity. And make sure you name your layers so that you remember what they do. Otherwise, you're going to be hunt, hunting and pecking with your eye to try and figure out, hey, what happened? And make sure you turn this off if you don't want the color you're currently painting to interact with the color below it. That is going to be it for today's video. I'm going to keep drawing, and I'm going to start a new video where you just watch me draw this particular item and I may or may not record audio with that one. Um, and I'll probably just convey some more tricks, but that's pretty much all you need to know. Uh, one of the things is to, uh, that I'm just figuring out right now is to draw these, these lines is really hard. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, it's because the angle that my hand is at is so awkward on the, on the pad in front of me. So I'm just gonna turn it I'm just going to turn it. Oops, my computer's moving and I'm not turning anymore. Hmm. Got to let that catch up, huh? Okay. So um, I I will just turn it and then put it at an angle that's easier for me to stroke that stroke at, if that makes sense. Do, 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 do. And that's much easier. So, um, so now that I have, I come over here, brush tool. So now that it's this kind of horizontal line, it's much easier for me to use the pad to strike, to stroke that mark. And I really want to do it with the pen tool, obviously, so that I get a really nice. Move. Don't forget that you can also use your hand tool to make it on an easier spot on the canvas for you to reach. 
but don't be afraid of moving, basically moving your paper around to get a better vantage point on these items, especially when you're tracing, especially when you're coloring, anytime. If you feel like your hand is in a really awkward position, just move your canvas so your hand is not in an awkward position. If you notice right there, I've wanted to draw a line like that. I would normally just move the canvas again so that I can draw in the direction that I want to draw. All right, I'm going to keep drawing in another video and that officially sets you up and gets you going for this one.